Welcome back, everybody, to another exciting episode, another edition, a movie edition of a week in Geekdom here on YouTube. It's Movie Roundup 2017 edition. It's the first time I'm doing this, so bear with me. I am reviewing, or actually, some quick notes on all the geeky stuff that came out in the year 2017. Uh, first off, we're going to go with uh, Logan from Fox. I believe I never reviewed this movie on this channel. Logan is awesome. It's great. It's great. Dark. Gritty. Realistic. A fantastic western set in the superhero genre with characters that we all know and love. And to me, it is the perfect um, end for the Fox X-Men universe. It is a fine way to conclude this universe. And Hugh Jackman does a stellar job. Everybody is doing a stellar job in this movie. And just seeing the way they took the basic premise of Old Man Logan and just making something rich, complex, and just very realistic in a very humanizing sort of way for these characters. Just pure cinematic bliss. One of the best movies of the year, in my honest opinion. Uh, yeah, you might say, oh, you're a nerd. There were obviously better pictures out there. I don't care. We're talking about geek stuff, so whatever. Uh, easily an A-plus for me. Next up, you got Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. One of my personal favorite MCU movies. One of my top five movies. Gets an A. You know, there's some uh, pacing issues midway through the movie. You don't really know where it's going. It drags just a little bit too much. But the sentiment, the heart, the feelings that this movie produces are what make the story such a special treat for me. I love this. It is one of the best, in my opinion. And, yeah, you might say Ego is a little bit uh, one-dimensional or whatever. But the more I see, the more I analyze, and the more I read into the movie, I actually really enjoyed Ego's story and what he tried to do. It didn't really seem that one-dimensional to me. Plus, the whole cast is great. The visuals look amazing. The movie looks fantastic in 4K. It just It's just awesome. Plus that whole thing with Yondu, it's just, oh man, just it's such a beautiful movie. Next up, we go into DC land with Wonder Woman and what a ruckus this movie produced. Everybody and their grandmother went to see this movie. Saw it. A+. Plus. The origin story we've been waiting for. Wonder Woman is excellent. A beautiful movie with great casting. The visuals on this is just awesome. I love the Themyscira scenes at the beach. I would love that we finally have Ares, one of my favorite DC villains, or one of my favorite comic book villains, I should say. And as a fan of Greco-Roman culture, I loved seeing uh, all of this play out, of course, with the superhuman twist. Homecoming. Spider-Man Homecoming. A lot of people were divisive about this simply because of the different take on Peter's origin. Um, you know, the whole Iron Man thing. I didn't... It didn't bother me so much because it's the MCU. It's an alternate Earth compared to the 616 universe. So, of course, characters are going to behave differently. And thankfully, we have Peter Parker and all his amazing friends and cast on the MCU with the Avengers and all that stuff. So that I am most grateful for. Plus the Vulture. Michael Keaton does a fantastic job and easily one of the best Marvel villains, Marvel movie villains of all time. Because it just goes to show you, at the end of the day, Spidey always has one of the best rogues gallery. I would say it gets an A-, minus simply because some of the jarring updates, specifically with Flash and uh, just the comedic tone of the movie, on certain jokes it falls a little bit flat, but most of it I enjoyed, so I'm just giving it an A-. minus. I'll stick with that. Next up. We got Thor Ragnarok. Oh boy. Look, I'll just get it straight out of the way. Uh, it's a fun movie, but if you're going to call this Ragnarok, I kind of wanted it to be a little a little bit more serious. Instead, just try so hard to make everybody laugh, and in my opinion, it doesn't quite stick the landing. Most of the jokes fall flat for me, but overall, it's a fun adventure that I recommend. Of course, seeing Hulk and Thor fight it out is fantastic. I love the idea of taking the bare-bones concept of 
Planet Hulk and adapting it to uh, this Thor movie. The whole thing with Sakaar looked fantastic. The visuals on this thing just look impressive as hell. I enjoyed the fact that uh, the director gave free reign to improvise most scenes. And the character of Valkyrie could easily be one of my favorite MCU additions in a long time. The character's immensely uh, gifted, badass, great. Overall, a huge success in my opinion. Uh, Hela, on the other hand, I did not like simply because people, I think people overhyped her. I think Kate Blanchett did a fantastic job, but at the end of the day, she's just an exposition heavy character. If you notice, all her scenes, she's just explaining plot devices and other background information, and she hardly has any time to interact with the main cast until the very end, when there's that big fight. Uh, so, really, she's by herself with uh, execution or whatnot, talking and talking and talking, and I couldn't care less. And at the end of the day, I'm sorry, but I did not like the change that they did to her origin story and her new relationship to Thor, Loki, and Odin. I was not a fan of that at all. And I'm sorry if that offends you, but it's it's bothersome. Plus, uh, the movie, uh, I don't know. There was something about it that didn't click with me. And I think it has to do with the fact that it didn't... You know, it's Ragnarok, but, you know, everybody's cracking jokes. Like, super heavy jokes. I get it, you want to you have a fun time, but eh. By the way, that scene with, that flashback scene with Valkyrie, the, the whole Valkyries against, uh, against Hela is impressive as hell. More of that, please. Whew. Next up, Justice League. Finally, the Justice League made it into uh, live action cinema, and... Oh, man. Uh, by the way, I'm giving Ragnarok a B. I forgot to do that. I'm giving it a B. Sorry. Justice, Justice League gets a B as well. And, um... Uh, yikes. Okay, where to begin with Justice League? I don't appreciate what happened with this movie and the treatment that Snyder got. I am a fan of letting somebody do their work, and he was trying to finish off his DCEU trilogy, if you will. It all started with Man of Steel, and there were themes going through that movie that went into BVS and now Justice League, and I think we got a butchered, neutered version of Snyder's vision, and I commend, because uh, out of this tragedy, with uh, out of this family tragedy that Snyder experienced, I commend Joss Whedon for uh, helping fix and... and produce the remainder of this movie but some of the alterations and the demands from the executives at Warner Brothers just didn't make any sense to me keeping it shorter uh, more comedic and just I don't know I liked all the character interaction interactions but I ever since the get-go I wasn't a huge fan of having Steppenwolf in this movie simply because I know my Steppenwolf and he's not that big of a protagonist you know his whole purpose is serving as a general and uncle to dark side so in that regard i am immensely excited about the direction of the overall lore of the dc films because we're including the new gods and that is fantastic i love the new gods apocalypse new genesis and we're gonna finally see the new gods themselves we're gonna see mr miracle dark side all these great characters that i cannot wait for audiences to experience and bring this uh, Lord of the Rings-esque uh, adventure that is the uh, New God saga from Jack Kirby. I can't wait for that. And plus, uh, if you know my channel, you know I'm a huge fan of a certain Justice League member, which I will talk about right now. We live in an age where we finally got to see Aquaman and Mira in a live-action movie. And that in and of itself makes this a success because I was in pure cinematic bliss every time Aquaman showed up. He's my favorite DC superhero. I love uh, their uh, role in this and I love the setups with uh, the two of the two characters, Mira and Aquaman for their solo movie or for his solo movie I should say. 
And oh man, it's it's just great. Momoa does an excellent job as Aquaman. Uh, Ezra Miller is hilarious as a ba- uh, young rookie Barry Allen. I love his relationship with Batman. Of course, Batman taking on a sort of mini uh, apprentice after the death of uh, Jason Todd in the cinematic universe. I love Wonder Woman and the role she plays in basically being this mother mother den to all the characters and uniting the league. Same with Bruce. Cyborg is awesome. I can't believe we have Cyborg and I cannot wait for a uh, Teen Titans. Let's let's do it. You know, let's uh, have Cyborg join the Titans instead. Let's do it. Also, Superman, his return was fantastic, and I love seeing uh, the full evolution of Superman. I know a lot of people are going to bitch and moan and say, oh, uh, they finally got Superman right after two movies. That was never the intention, though. That was never the purpose. The whole thing was a setup from the very beginning. He got a rookie Superman in Man of Steel, and the way he evolves into the character we all know it was as intended. It's just a butchered version of that. And I do remember, and you can look it up, before BVS was coming out, they mentioned the fact that it was sort of like a trilogy, like uh, like a Star Wars trilogy. You had BVS being that Empire movie, really super dark and whatnot, and Justice League was always meant to be happy-go-lucky from the get-go. Yes, his original version included some dark and gritty elements, but yeah, it gave them, it gave them more substance, more realism. I guess, and the whole point of the DC films are about beings with superpowers instead of superpowered beings, if that makes any sense. So yeah, I thought Justice League was great. It could have been a lot better. The scene transition suffered from the uh, rough cuts, and I don't know, if they would have just left the original intention of Snyder, uh, or if they would have followed through with his plan, we would have had a better Steppenwolf a quick dark side cameo and many other scenes that were cut that I think would have been integral in in creating this epic trilogy of movies that uh, sadly did not live up to the hype in my opinion but still Justice League gets a B because it's fun and you get very badass moments from your favorite superheroes isn't that enough aren't we content come on man they're just movies let's have some fun and speaking of movies and having some fun Boy, oh boy, another Star Wars movie. People are upset. Yikes. Star Wars The Last Jedi, Episode 8. This is my last review. This one gets a B plus, I think. Last Jedi is a thinking man Star Wars. Of course, there are a couple uh, silly jokes and gags because it's Disney. It's family friendly and all that stuff. But Ryan does a fantastic job, and I wrote this on social media, of deconstructing the Star Wars franchise into unexpected, beautiful, and mysterious ways for a new generation to build upon. You're taking everything down, you're giving us new stuff, and I just think people went in expecting the same old plot devices, and and for so many years people did countless fan theories two years straight and they didn't get that they got something completely different which is why i say lower your expectations and don't don't play around the whole theory thing because you're going to get disappointed did i enjoy every single aspect of this movie no there were parts i did not like specifically the middle part the second act with the whole casino thing i thought was weirdly out of place and could have been done completely different but it was fun it was eh, whatever uh The action was spectacular. Those Jedi battles sequences were amazing. Uh, The starships looked amazing. And it's basically this one huge chase that plays out through the entire movie, which I appreciated. Uh, Leia gets a great send-off. Luke is fantastic. All these characters are great. And I think, yeah, I think it's a problem when people expect so much of something they're honestly and they're truthfully going to be disappointed regardless of what the movie was going to be and i fear this is going to be the norm for every single star wars movie that comes out when the han solo movie comes out people are going to complain they're going to hate it and there's going to be people that like it and same with episode 9 a lot of people are going to hate episode 9 it's just a fact unfortunately star wars fans are very freaking divisive 
and I don't know. Uh, I just, I enjoyed it for what it was and bringing us a new take on the whole light versus dark and how everything isn't as clear as it was back in the day. Times have changed, philosophies change, and uh, the narrative of this movie reflects that 21st century state of mind. I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you guys think of all of all the TV shows and movies that I talked about? I hope this was to your enjoyment. I know I skipped out on reviewing all of these movies when they came out. I wanted to do them, but I forgot to do so. So can't blame me on that. Or actually, you can. I don't know. So yeah, let me know down below. Do you agree? Disagree? Let me know down below. Guys, as always, you can follow me on your favorite social media platform. Just type a We Can Geek Them and I'm there for you guys. All right, I gotta go. I will catch all of you on our next episode.